Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. Today I have a lovely video for you. This is going to be so much fun. We're going to be cooking some summer treats. I have a whole bunch of delicious little treats lined up for you. They're going to be simple and easy to make for your next little get together or maybe even 4th of July. And I know we're going through a lot. We're going through you know what. Um, and most of us are not going to have large gatherings at our house or we're not going to be going to any major event But I think as long as you are alive and well, it's a cause to celebrate. I can't wait to show you Let's go into the kitchen and whip up something good Start off with your blue jello You let that firm up then we'll add our cream and so that the cream doesn't sink this should already be firm and then separately we'll make red jello and then that will go on top of it so we're going to make some home fries or french fries not really home fries but french fries starting with some plain simple russet potatoes which have been cut longitudinally right here daughter Mariam has helped us cut some fries pretty simple try to keep them even uh, literally one potato cut into like 16 strips so that's how we got these just cutting them in half and then each half in two and then each piece gets cut in two until you have 16 pieces per potato so we'll get ready to fry this up and we'll have our French fries at home. You can also do this in the oven if you want to, want to be super healthy, but Mariam wants them fried. So over here we have some drumsticks, and this is enough for five people, if not more. And we are gonna wash it, wash it off with some vinegar, apple cider vinegar and lemon and then we're going to season it season it and bake it in the oven if you want to you can do it on the grill but because it's so hot outside I think we're just going to do it in the oven so it's nice to have help I got Kareem in the kitchen with me Mariam is also here and um, he's gonna season up this chicken okay let's see So we've got on here paprika, garlic powder, cayenne pepper, um, seasoned salt, or adobo. So while Kareem is finishing the chicken, or the chicken's getting ready to go into the oven uh, to bake, I'm going to get ready to make some meatballs, some delicious, simple meatballs. But these meatballs are going to look like I took hours to make them because we're going to put them on a stick bamboo stick so we got our breadcrumbs we have a whole onion we have some milk because chef ramsey says you can use some milk <laughs> when you mix the breadcrumbs it'll make the meatballs even lighter and one egg i don't know that he uses an egg in his but i've always used egg in my meatballs oh and of course you can't make meatballs without spice so whatever your spices of choice gather them so first thing I'm gonna do is dice up an onion finely diced onion okay so we got our onions and I'm going to put our beef in there Got our beef, going to put some breadcrumbs, and I'm gonna use probably about, mm, about a cup, I don't really measure, about a cup of breadcrumbs, and these are the garlic and herb, herb, progresso breadcrumbs. So about a cup, uh, not too much, and then we're going to put an egg and half. You know, I said this was about half a cup of milk, I'm gonna use about a quarter. Go ahead and put our spice. I'm gonna put some cayenne pepper in there. Mm, not too much. 
I'm going to put some garlic powder in there. And again, add what you like, but I do like quite a bit of spice. I don't really like bland food or plain food. So adding some cayenne pepper, I said, and now this is paprika. Because you want the meatballs to be able to stand alone. The other thing too that's great about this recipe is that um, you can make them in advance and keep them in your freezer if you like and then take them out and use them um, when you're ready. So you can make the meatballs and then put them in a stew if you want, like have a tomato based stew or you can have a coconut and ginger based sort of stew or gravy and add the meatballs to that. So whatever you like, but today we're going to make them into kebabs. Okay, you're going to add the egg. And then we're just going to mix it up. Mix it until it's all thoroughly mixed with the onions and the spice. So you'll notice I did not add salt to the mix because uh, usually the breadcrumbs already has quite a bit of salt in it. In my opinion, I find it salty. So no need to add salt especially if you have high blood pressure. <laughs> so making the meatballs, they're about golf size, and of course they're going to shrink once you cook them. Okay, so we're gonna use a shallow amount of oil. I'm pretty much using the same frying pan that we used to fry the uh, French fries, but I poured off most of the oil. So you just want a little bit of oil. So we're not going to cook this fully through. We're just doing this so that it holds the shape. Basically, holds the shape and gets some color before it goes into the oven and fully cooks through. done with our meatballs like I said the center will not be properly or fully cooked at least not to my liking so but frying them or brine, browning them helps them to hold their shape so you can push it on the skewer so now we're gonna assemble our meatball kebab okay so I feel like starting with a piece of onion and take my piece of onion Push it through the skewer, real simple. Maybe a piece of pepper, red pepper, like the contrast, and zucchini. And then we're gonna push a little meatball through it. Very easy. Do this again. Let's see, this time maybe I'll put some yellow pepper, another piece of onion, and you just keep doing this until you have a beautiful skewer. And I think two meatballs in this case is sufficient. After placing the kebabs longitudinally, you can then place them perpendicular to make more room like that. And into the oven they'll go, but before then, I didn't show you in the last one, you can drizzle a little bit of oil, the same oil you use to fry, just drizzle a little bit on the vegetables. Um, that way they, you know, come out with a little bit of flavor and they don't burn and don't stick to the pan. So now we're gonna make some brownies. Kareem's making some brownies for me. <laughs> so this is just graham crackers um, mixed with crushed and mixed with half a stick of butter. And that's gonna make the crust. I'm gonna add our brownie mix as usual, follow the directions, and then going to top it with some marshmallows to give that s'more look. So this is a modern take on the classic s'mores where you have the graham crackers, the chocolate, and um, the marshmallows. 
so he's just pushing down the crumbs to make that crust. So for our white, we decided to go with real yogurt. You could do fresh cream or you could do uh, coconut milk. Um, yeah, so just a nice layer of something creamy and white. Right, and over here I have Maria making me some skewers, so we're going with the red and white theme, red, white, and blue, and we're going to make this. So I've made one as a sample for her, and then you can put these in glasses, so it's just those extra touches that make things fun. Put these in your glasses, and whatever your favorite drink is, it just makes it a lot more glamorous. So next I'm going to make some little smokies, but we're going to make them in a round circle. So I'm just going to put some parchment paper on this and okay. went ahead and greased the pan. So this is just a little cornstarch, but you can use regular flour. This is just so that the pastry doesn't stick. So I'm going to use this puff pastry, which has thawed out. You can buy this at the freezer section of your supermarket. Super easy if you don't want to be bothered making your own puff pastry, which requires some level of skill. And this is the brand that I'm using, Puff Pastry Pepperidge Farm comes with two sheets, so I have the other sheet in the freezer. I'm going to use these uh, Beef Little Smokies, and this is Hillshire Farm brand. It's 100% uh, beef, and they're fully cooked, so it's great because then all I have to worry about is cooking the pastry, which takes about 10 to 15 minutes. Even strips. And there's already a little bit of a guideline, so I'm just cutting in between that. Take your little smoky, wrap it around. Ooh, beautiful. And then what's cool about this is you can put your condiment in the middle. So you could put like ketchup or mess mustard. So the next uh, dessert option is going to be another red, white, and blue option with watermelon. Watermelons are red. White will be marshmallow and blue will be blueberries. All right, let's get this watermelon. <laughs> oh. Ooh, it looks like it's going to be sweet. Ha ha! <laughs> How you like me now? That. So there you go. Got your cubes. And we got our big handy dandy bowl, nice large bowl. I like these and you, I think you can get these on Amazon. Um, I will put a link in the description box if you would like something like this. They're great for like pasta dishes. They're great for, you name it. This mint is so fragrant. It literally smells like what you imagine gum smells like or a really good brand toothpaste. It's really good. Anyway, I'm going to uh, dice it up, thinly diced, and add it on top of the watermelon as it enhances the taste. It just makes it super fresh, fresh tasting. Put that all over my watermelon. And then let's follow it with some marshmallows for our white contrast. Isn't that pretty? 
And then we're gonna follow it with our washed blueberries, fresh blueberries. Mix that up. So that's done and I'm going to put it in the refrigerator covered until we are ready to put all the food out because we're almost done. So I don't know if you know, I like to collect napkins and I get these at like Tuesdays, TJ Maxx. They look fancy, but they're not really that fancy. They're paper and pretty instead of using fabric. So this might be a good one for today. Um, these I use for Father's Day, but these actually look good for 4th of July. So I might use this for the next table setting, which I will show you uh, what it looks like if I had decorated it for 4th of July, just to kind of inspire you. Um, these ones look or feel almost like fabric. They're really thick and nice. So these are kind of formal, but they're actually not fabric. I really like this pineapple emblem on it in gold. So I think I will use these ones outside today. It's got these daffodils on them. Daffodils and a butterfly. Um, super pretty. So if you've been following me for a while, you know that since we moved recently, I do have this little table out here on our deck outside of the kitchen. And I'm thinking of putting the food out here once I am done. on this <laughs> made a leaf with dough. All right, so let's see if we can carefully take it off. It's kind of rustic looking. Put our ketchup, voila. If we had some scallions, I'd probably sprinkle that on there too. But I think this is fine. So all you're gonna do is pull off a piece. All right, so we are ready to set the rest of the table. So for some extra magic, why not add a little bit of fairy lights? So these I had from like Christmas time and I keep them handy, keep them around and I'm gonna hide the box behind the plant and, and then just kind of randomly put it on the table before I put the food on. There's no proper way to do it. Just make it look nice. Hey guys, so we're all done and look at our beautiful table. Let's give you a little tour. So let me show you one at a time what we have here. So we have the Jello yogurt and blue Jello cups. Isn't that beautiful? Turned out really nice. Kareem did an awesome job. And then we have our watermelon salad with marshmallows and mint and blueberries have here the brownie, the uh, s'more brownie. Here we got the french fries Maria made, got the kebabs, look how nice those came out. And we have the chicken, the oven baked chicken. I put a glaze on it, just figure out what your uh, favorite glaze is and put it on it and then put it back in the oven. So that came out really well. We have our little wieners here looking amazing and let me go ahead and pull off one so you can see and i get to be the first one mm, very good and of course we have a salad you see me waving my hand it's actually bees we have bees because we have all these flowers all right so now i'm going to show you what this table would look like if i had actually set it up for fourth of july You can see now the uh, dessert cups really make sense <laughs> and the fruit salad. Comment, like, subscribe, all that good stuff and I will see you soon. So please don't forget to celebrate something. You're alive. Celebrate something. We do have serious work to do. 
as a community and it will continue to happen but take a moment with your family or with yourself if you're living alone to enjoy something nice and I hope this uh, little garden meal that I put together helps inspire you for your next outdoor party or your next uh, family get together okay so with love from North Carolina bye we're gonna eat now I forgot to show you Mmm. Mmm. -mm. It's delicious. Not gonna lie. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> I'm so silly. <laughs> hey, Kenton, say hi. Say hi, yeah, you can see it right there. <laughs> Why are you spending so low? <laughs> oh man. Ooh. <laughs> oh, it's getting rid of it. It's getting rid of it. It's not like these uh, candles. <laughs> oh, say. <laughs> ah, we're not starting a fire. I don't see how kids wouldn't find this to be fun. <laughs> kiss, kiss. It just ended. Bye, folks.